The story is told of a particular Thursday evening. A wife happens to be working late into the night, and so she calls her husband, who's already on his way home from work, and she says, Honey, I need you to do me a favor. Go to the grocery store. I want you to pick up those organic vegetables, please. The husband, of course, says back, what, what are the organic vegetables? And the wife says, you know the organic vegetables. Those are the ones without the poisonous chemicals on them. So sure enough, the husband goes to the store, and he's walking around. He's walking around the store. He has no idea which one are the organic vegetables and which ones are not the organic vegetables. So he's standing there in the vegetable aisle, and he calls over to the store clerk who's there. And he says, look, tell me, just tell me which one are the organic vegetables. The store clerk has no idea what he's talking about. And the guy says, please, this is for my wife. Just tell me which vegetables don't have the poison spray on them. And he said, and the store clerk pulls them in close and says, why are you going to add some? <laughs> Speaking of organic vegetables, happy Earth Day to everybody. This is the day designated to mark the environmental movement and mark our care for the Earth. And as I was thinking about Earth Day and this observance, and there are going to be people throughout the country, throughout the world today, talking about the importance of environmentalism, about caring for the Earth. And I couldn't help but thinking how many of them drove their SUVs to wherever they are to speak about environmentalism. How many of them may pick up a meal in disposable, maybe even styrofoam cartons on their way to their Earth Day celebration to talk about caring for the environment? And here, while well, I can tell you that I did not drive at all to get to Shul to talk to you about Earth Day, we left our lights on for 24 hours. There's a certain hypocrisy, maybe we should say, to this environmental movement. We go around talking about the importance of caring for the environment. There are even people who jet around the world to tell you to care for the environment. There's a certain hypocrisy therein. But then again, the people on the other side who really condemn, who really criticize the environmental movement, there's a hypocrisy there as well. Because these are often people who consider themselves real intellectuals, academics. But these intellectuals and academics who criticize the environmental movement often dismiss nine out of 10 scientists who are telling us that climate change is real, that we're causing it, and that we're causing thirst for our kids. So these intellectuals are quick to dismiss those other nine scientists in favor of the one scientist who says, no, go ahead with your business, do whatever you want to the earth, we'll figure it out later. There's a certain hypocrisy in that as well. And so on this Earth Day, I wanted to take us through a couple of texts from our Torah that talk about a Jewish approach to environmentalism. And so you're welcome to take out your Eitz Chaim Chumashim, and we're going to turn to the very beginning of Genesis. I am now on page 10. Page 10. Here we are in the midst of the first chapter of Genesis. And we read very clearly in the Torah that God creates humankind in God's image, in the image of God. God created this Adam, male and female, God created them. And here I am now in verse 28. Vayavarach otam elokim, vayomer laham elokim, peru urvu umuluata aretz. God blessed them and God said to them, be fertile and increase, fill the earth. And then the Torah goes on. Be fertile and increase, yes, but fill the earth and master it. And rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and all the living things that creep on the earth. The Torah literally says to Adam and Eve, to their descendants, not only should you fill the earth with lots of children, but you should conquer it and you should rule over it. You should master it. Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and all the living things that creep on earth. From this pasuk, from this verse, from these verses, our rabbis teach that God has given the earth to man. That there's a clear hierarchy of authority, 
with human beings being at the very top. And that God has given us the ability to control the earth, to dominate it, essentially to do what we want with the earth. And that's right here in the beginning of Genesis. Now if you'll turn with me to the next chapter, to chapter 2, and here I am on page 15, perhaps we have a little bit of a different perspective with regard to humankind's relationship to the earth. Ve'ikach Hashem Elohim et Adam. The Lord God took the man and placed him in the Garden of Eden. The Shomra Ula'ovda. La'ovda Ula Shomra. To till it and to tend it is what the translation says. But here it says that God placed man in the Garden of Eden, La'ovda, to work it, to work the land. Our job is to work the land. Ula Shomra but also to protect it. So here we might have a little bit of a different perspective. Our job is not to conquer the land. Our job is not to rule over everything. Our job is to work the land as we do, and we have permission to do so, to take from the land what we need to prosper. But also we have an obligation to guard the land, the Shomra, to guard it, to protect it, to keep it. And we learn a little further about the mitzvah of Baal Tashchit, the Jewish values as it pertains to environmentalism. And I'll take you now all the way from Sefer Bereshit, all the way from the book of Genesis to Sefer Darim to the book of Deuteronomy. And if you'll turn with me, please, to page 1104. 1104 in your Eitz Chaim Chumashim. I'm on page 1104 with Deuteronomy chapter 20. So we know first that God says to humanity that you can do anything you want to the land. It's yours to conquer it and to rule over it. Then God says with regard to the land, it's your job, la'ovda lushama, to work it and to guard it. And here we are now, centuries upon centuries later. Our ancestors have been freed from Egypt. They've wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and here they are at the border of Eretz Yisrael overlooking the land of Israel, getting ready to enter Israel. And Moses gives to our ancestors laws as it pertains to warfare. And now I'm on verse 19, again, chapter 20. When in your war against a city, Moses says, when in your war against a city you have to besiege it a long time in order to capture it, you must not destroy its trees, wielding the axe against them. You may eat of them, but you must not cut them down. From here, our rabbis derive the Jewish value of Baal Tashchit, of not wasting. And you see at the bottom of page 1104, the concern for fruit trees in these verses provides one of the foundations for the Jewish concern for the environment. We are commanded to preserve the environment even as we use it. In these moments, our Torah comes to teach us that we humans have not only the ability but the right to use the land for what we need it for, to conquer the land, to subdue it, to rule over it. It's ours to prosper humanity. But we can't do so at the risk of tomorrow. And here Moses says, right, when you're laying siege, when you're trying to conquer a city, you can't cut down its fruit trees. Why can't you cut down its fruit trees? Because you might want to eat of them. Because your kids might need to eat of them. And so even though we have this right, as it were, to do whatever we want to the land, the Torah comes to teach us. Jewish values come to remind us that as Jews, we have an obligation to think about the other. We have an obligation to think about tomorrow. And so here we are on Earth Day. And we come to see that it's probably no mitzvah, no commandment to live in a yurt. We don't have to shun the modern world and hide ourselves away in a cave just to protect the environment. At the same time, we can't forget that we don't inherit the world from our, from our parents, we borrow it from our children. Okay? We have to pass this earth on to the next generation. And it's on us, we are obligated to be mindful that while we have the right to utilize the resources of the earth, we don't have the right to steal it from our kids. 
And we have to be mindful of that. Congregation Shard Sedek, I'm very proud of our green team that has been led the last couple years by my wife, by Rebecca Starr. And this group of people who've come together to say, for our synagogue, what is one step that our community can take to be more mindful of our obligation to the environment, to be more mindful of our obligation to our kids and what we leave to them? We've eliminated styrofoam from the synagogue. We've now planted a wildflower garden just outside the Berman Center for Jewish Education. And if summer ever comes, we'll start to see hopefully bees gather at the wildflower garden. You know, if you're like me, you're probably not going to picnic next to the wildflower garden because who likes bees? But I'm told it's good for the environment. And we also, if you noticed on your way in, the beautiful tower garden, where we're raising vegetables with very little water, with little to do, demonstrating what we can do if we really set our minds to it and how we can not only care for the environment but prepare it for our children. And so on this Earth Day, my question to you, my challenge to you is not how can you totally get rid of all modern conveniences and all the modernity in your life to live like they did thousands of years ago. My challenge, my question for you is what's one step, one step you can take to help make the earth better for our children and our grandchildren? Can you perhaps drive a little less than you otherwise did? Can you bring your own cup to Starbucks so we can use a little less disposable? Can you recycle more? Can you compost more? Can you build your own garden in your backyard? What's one small step you can take for the sake of Baal Tashchit, for this Jewish value of not wasting? What's one small step you can take to think ahead for your children and your grandchildren and maybe even your great-grandchildren one day? Because baby Ruby wants to benefit from the earth just as much as the rest of us. And we have, sh we have to make sure that the land is around for her, too. I'm reminded of a story that comes from the Midrash that talks of two men who are in a big boat. And sure enough, they're on either side of the boat and they're rowing away, rowing away, when all of a sudden, one man on his side of the boat decides to take out a drill. And he starts drilling in his end of the boat, right through the boat. And the man on the other end of the boat yells at him, what are you doing, what are you doing, what are, why are you drilling a hole in our boat? The guy on the other end said, what do you care, it's on my side. We're all in this boat together. Let us be mindful that the Jewish values as it pertains to environmentalism does not say that we have to abdicate all modernity. We have the right, we have the ability to use the earth's resources for ourselves. But we also have an obligation to think about tomorrow, to think about our kids and our grandkids and our great-grandkids, and thereby take one step in our own personal journeys to make this earth, to make the world, to make our environment a little better, a little safer for them. So let me wish to each of you an Earth Day Sameach, a happy Earth Day. Let me challenge you to think, what is one step, one step you can take to be more mindful of the environment. And let me wish to all of you, certainly to our children and our grandchildren, a Shabbat Shalom. Kein Yehi may this be God's will, and let us say it together. Amen.